Welcome to a Legal Talk with uh, Han and Han Attorneys here on uh, E-Radio. And uh, today is especially interesting if you're a TikTok content creator or a TikToker, as it's uh, known. Vanessa Lawrence from uh, Han and Han joins us uh, from uh, Pretoria to uh, give us some uh, very interesting information today. Vanessa, welcome to uh, Legal Talk. Thank you, Ian. Thank you for having me on. So, Vanessa, is there any way to protect uh, content that is posted on TikTok. So, Ian, when one creates works such as those that are going to be created on the TikTok, um, music videos, um, v- visual videos, etc., copyright comes into existence automatically, efficient skill and effort in creating that work. So, yes, you have copyrights in your work, and then when you post it on TikTok, then you should be able to protect that copyright. I'm just going to give a caveat before we go any further. Copyright um, protects the expression, as in what you see. It doesn't protect the idea behind it. So in other words, if I were to create a TikTok, um, I don't know, of me doing a handstand for 30 seconds, and you create a TikTok of you doing a handstand for 30 seconds, um, then I can't claim that that you're infringing my my copyright because the idea is not a problem. It's It's the actual what it looks like. Exactly. And I mean, you've got all these trends going on on TikTok anyway, and uh, they all exactly. copy each other. And then they all have uh, music with it as well. And that music is owned again by the record company. I remember that uh, big story a couple of months ago. I think it was Universal who pulled all their music off uh, uh, TikTok. I don't know if you remember that case. Uh, they said, nah, we're taking all our music. <laughs> so so TikTok TikTok does have a library of music that, mm. that you can use and that is that is royalty free. So if if it's there, then TikTok has already arranged a license with people like Universal. Um and and any TikTok creator, content creator can take any of that music out of the library and and use it and it'll be free of charge because TikTok has already arranged it. If anyone wants to use music outside that library, then obviously copyright is going to exist and they have to then arrange with that person directly. So if Universal pulled all their music off and someone is dying to use a Universal song, in order not to infringe Universal's copyright, they would have to then go and and speak to Universal directly and arrange a license, etc., pay them for the use of the the music as opposed to that which is on TikTok's library. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> it does rather. <laughs> but uh, if, if, you know, it's, it's worth it for some people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People go to great lengths, say, uh, to create uh, content. But uh, when it comes to copyright, yeah. Vanessa, can I register Ooh. it? How long does it last? So, um, as I said, in South Africa, copyright comes into existence automatically when skill and effort are used in the creation of the work. In South Africa, it is not possible to register copyright. That There are some countries which allow the registration of copyright, and that's generally just to confirm the right that has already come into existence um, automatically when that skill and effort is u- used in the creation. So, it is possible, for example, in America to get you, yourself a certificate that says, I own the copyright in this. Um, and also, we have an exciting um, ag- agreement called the Berne Convention, which most countries in the world are signatories to. And in terms of the Berne Convention, any signatory country has to acknowledge the rights of the residents of the other signatories as much as it would acknowledge its own rights. So, for example, South Africa is a signatory and America is a signatory. So, America, if, if you own copyright in South Africa, America has to grant you as much rights as it would give you if you held rights in America, which is quite nice and also helpful for things like TikTok because um, if it were more a geographically limited concept, then I think TikTok would have um, a greater problem with the with the whole protection of copyright because it would be very different in each jurisdiction. Um, so, so I think TikTok is is quite relieved about the Berne Convention, and I think all copyright holders should be. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you asked me how long it takes. Sorry. So, yep. so each each country does have its own national laws that will that will say how long copyright exists in their individual countries. They are very broadly aligned because obviously of the, of the Berne Convention. So in, in, and it also depends on the work. So for example, um, music or a video will, um, will 
last for 50 years from the death of the author. So it's very important to put that in your will because for 50 years after you died, there are still rights in that. And you'll remember the Lion Sleeps Tonight song. That was all of that that came into, a, into play in that one. Ah, okay, the lion sleeps tonight. Yeah, we yes. know that one. Um, and then there's another uh, uh, case that's uh, an example <coughs> about uh, the allegations of copying made by uh, Oneswa Mbola against Nara Smith. Can you just briefly tell us what happened there? Um, Oneswa, both of them are, are um, content creators. Um, I think that they're sort of the, uh, the mom content creators. So Oneswa um, creates recipes and she grows her, all her own stuff and so on. Nara is... is um, uh, she she um, more a, a city dweller, I would say. So Aneswa made a boba tea, and uh, you do know what a boba tea is, I'm assuming. It's got those yes. little balls in at That's the bottom, it. yeah. And um, they generally you, you you know them. So so all, every child in the world will know what that is. Um, and and they generally made out of tapioca and sugar and so on. Um, Aneswa made them from scratch and made her tea out of something that she got out of the garden and so on. And, and, and made this recipe. Nara Smith, shortly after that, um, came up with, with a boba recipe, which um, contained very similar ingredients, very similar way of doing things. And um, Oneswa had accused Nara of, of stealing her idea. Um, and obviously, it is quite a public spat. Um, it, it's quite lively on Twitter. Um, and, the, in, and, and I must admit, I have, um, I have chatted to a number of people People and ask them what they thought. So, firstly, the problem is that copyright doesn't protect ideas. As I said earlier, it protects the way they are presented. So, Oneswa, as I said, is is very earthy and um, things from the garden and very natural. Where that is certainly not the impression that Nara is is trying to create. So, although the the recipe does have overlaps, um, what is seen is is not is not a, a copy of the one of the other. As as far as as far as I can, it's my opinion. Obviously, everything is subjective with with copyright. And maybe um, if you were to go and watch the videos, or if someone else were, they they would have a, a different opinion. The other the other thing that one must always remember with copyright is that there is always the possibility that two people could come to the same end result. So, for example, if I were to go and stand on Bloberg Beach and and paint Table Mountain, and you were to go and stand on Bloberg Beach and ta paint Table Mountain, there would certainly be overlaps. They, they would look, there would be similarities between our work. And I don't necessarily have to have seen your work for them to be similar. Um, so, one must always remember that, that that's obviously quite an easy example. Whether one would get to the same recipe is is a, a different question. But I don't think that it is impossible for one person to have reached the same end, the same way of of creating a boba tea without seeing the other person's way of doing it. It it um it didn't seem to me that it was so unusual. But I I I'm not very good in the kitchen, so so maybe maybe it was very unusual. So this is quite an interesting case. I'm certainly not taking one side or the other. Um, but yes, it is it is quite an interesting case to to see how the two are interacting and and also um, how they feel about about copying. Um, I just want to mention that um, TikTok does actually allow for reporting of, of um, copyright um, infringement. So if you do feel that your copyright has been infringed, there is a way to report it on TikTok, and they have a bunch of specialists that will review it and see whether they think that there is copyright infringement. And it's a three strikes and you're out. So um, if there is a serial... Um, copier, then that uh, that person's account can be suspended. <laughs> yeah, and there goes all your hard work. So uh, best to, yes. to keep an eye on that. I'm sure they'll give you a warning. But I remember, Vanessa, there was a case also a year or two ago on uh, Facebook where two photographers were at blows because uh, they said, no, but uh, I just uh, took that photo on uh, the beach in Cape Town, that beautiful sunset photo. And the guy says, mm -hmm. well, why does your photo look exactly like mine? And then eventually it, it uh, came out that they were actually standing next to each other. <laughs> taking the well, that's exactly the point. As I say, it isn't impossible for two people to be taking the same photo. So, yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. This is so interesting, hey? Um, uh, thank you so much for your insights uh, into this matter today. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. 
That's Vanessa Lawrence from uh, Han and Han Attorneys. Are you or your business in trouble and struggling to find a solution? Call Hahn and Hahn Attorneys as we assist clients in finding solutions. We specialize in consumer and food law, commercial and construction law, forensic investigations and administrative law. Visit hahnlaw.co.za. That's H A H N. We assist clients nationwide. Hahn and Hahn Attorneys because we care. Don't miss legal talk with Hahn and Hahn Attorneys Wednesday mornings at 10 on E Radio.